welcome to my kitchen. I'm Jeannie Petrucci, registered dietitian nutritionist. And today I am going to demonstrate a really simple bone broth recipe. Uh, you, I usually don't do live cooking demos on Sunday, but you know what? I had a bag of bones and I really needed to cook them. So I thought, why not? Let's just pop in and share. Um, so, you know, there are a number of reasons why making bone broth at this time makes a lot of sense. So nutritionally, uh, bone broth is really nutrient dense. Um, it is rich in collagen, which is a protein that really uh, is just so great for your gut microbiome and the lining of your gut. Um, if you had joined me last week, we talked a little bit about gut-associated lymphatic tissue, which is where all of that immune system signaling happens in the gut. And uh, again, bone broth is rich in collagen, gelatin, that really helps um, to nourish and feed that tissue and maintain that tissue. So um, really taking care of your GALT, your gut-associated lymphatic tissue. Um, and then also bone broth uh, contains NAC, which is N-acetylcysteine. Now, N-acetylcysteine is a compound that is found in many bronchitis uh, medications, and uh, it is uh, intended to break up mucus and help with um, expectorating mucus from the lungs. So again, at this time, just kind of makes a lot of sense nutritionally. You know, also, uh, it's great hydration. You know, we didn't, don't talk about it enough, the importance of hydration for just overall health, but especially for immune function. And function. You want to make sure that um, you are very well hydrated. And, you know, sipping bone broth or even having a nice brothy soup uh, goes a long way to contribute to overall daily hydration. And then I don't want to move forward without talking about the culinary attributes of this recipe. You know, why does it make sense to make bone broth at this time? Well, a lot of reasons. Um, number one, we don't want to waste at this time, right? So if you are roasting a chicken, you're going to end up with bones. Or if you are making um, any other type of animal protein-based dish that has bones in it, you're going to be left with the bones because we can't eat them. So just saving them in a plastic bag in your freezer until you have enough. You know, I would say that this effort is worth it um, once you have about four cups of bones. And I have uh, the bones of two chickens here. Um, so, you know, it doesn't have to be chicken bones. I love uh, bone broth made with chicken bones. That is my preference. Uh, but you can make bone broth and use this recipe really with any bones. Also... Uh, this recipe and most bone broth recipes utilize kitchen and pantry essentials. So I'm going to take you through the ingredients today and you'll see these are probably things you already have in your pantry. Um, if not, and you're planning on going grocery shopping in the next two weeks or so, just kind of keep these things in mind. These are, you know, essentials that you really should have on hand for bone broth and for a lot of other recipes that we'll be demonstrating as well. We have carrots four carrots. I uh, peeled them, but you don't have to. You can just scrub them. Four chopped carrots, rough chop, and we'll talk a little bit about why I chopped them. Uh, then we have four stalks of celery, six garlic cloves, an onion of choice. So I chose, you could use an entire red onion or white onion, but I chose uh, scallions because I had some sorry ones in a bottom drawer. So we have four scallions here that are chopped. I have a bag of parsley, which could be any herb that you have in your pantry, but this is you know probably about one cup chopped or two handfuls. I have my bag of bones. Then I have two tablespoons of uh, apple cider vinegar, and we'll talk about why we're using that. And then I have my seasonings. And if you can see, I think you can see here a little bit in the corner, I also have some baked potatoes. That is actually not going to be used in the bone broth, but after the bone broth is done, I'll show you what we can do with the potatoes. So let's come back. Great, so hopefully now you can see me and we'll get, let's, we'll get started. Um, another ingredient obviously is water. We're going to need water and I also have one bay leaf here. So let's get started making it and then we can chat as we make it. So I have my bones. Now, one of these chickens 
was roasted and one was grilled. And so I'm going to get a lot of really great flavor in this bone broth because these were already very well seasoned. Um, and of course the grilling and the roasting brings out a lot of flavor. Um, I should mention that I'm using the bones, but I'm also using the skin. So when I removed the meat from the bones to serve to the family, and of course, when I made the chicken salad, uh, which we'll talk about, um, I reserved uh, the uh, wings, which um, we didn't eat, and uh, the skin, uh, because they are rich in collagen. And remember, we really want to uh, draw that out um, in the bone broth. So you take your, and we are using an Instant Pot today. Boy, I really should have said that. Uh, we're using an Instant Pot. You could do this in a crock pot as well. It will just take longer. So I'll share with you the timing on that. So you add your bones. You add your carrots. We have four carrots here celery so so four stalks of celery so if you're watching with me today just drop in uh what you might use instead of carrots if you didn't have carrots on hand because you you do have lots of options um, i will share with you that i often replace carrots with butternut squash so if i have frozen butternut squash or raw i'll just throw that in here because it does add nice flavor you could absolutely use parsnips as well parsnips add really nice flavor here and then i added the celery i often replace celery with fennel because my family really does enjoy the flavor of fennel. It will impart a licorice-like flavor. Um, so if you like that, that would be a nice addition. I'm going to add my scallions. I used four large scallions. Uh, but again, as I mentioned, you could use any allium, vegetable alliums are uh, very uh, more immune supporting uh, compounds, uh, plants uh, that have compounds that are immune supporting, sorry. Uh, so any type of allium vegetable here will be great. I use scallions, you could use red onion, yellow onion, shallots, leeks would be great. Just make sure you rinse the leeks really well, adding that. Another allium superstar here, our garlic. I am using six very large garlic cloves because my husband really likes garlicky bone broth, uh, but you can go heavier or lighter on the garlic as you wish. I'm just going to add that as well. I am going to add my parsley. Boy, the options here are endless uh, for the herbs. I happen to have uh, parsley with a mix of parsley stems. So I made a tabbouleh last night and I had some leftover stems. So you could either compost them or you can save them in a bag and use them for your bone broth. Uh, I actually do have, i um, just gonna tear this in half a little bit. There we go. I actually do have some full leaf parsley in here as well because I just happen to have a lot of parsley, which is really nice. But you could use uh, a mix of rosemary, thyme, cilantro, really any herb that you and your family enjoy. Now I'm going to add my apple cider vinegar. I have two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar that I am going to add to my bone broth. And if any of you know the reason why I'm doing that, please go ahead and share. But I will go ahead and share it as well. Uh, the acid from the apple cider vinegar helps draw the minerals out of the bones. So another nutrition attribute to bone broth is that it's rich in minerals. So in order to extract uh, the minerals from the bone, the long, long term uh, cooking in the Instant Pot is going to help, uh, but the acid uh, just kind of accelerates that process and helps get a lot of the minerals uh, that you want in your broth out of the bones. So we use the acid. It doesn't really add any sourness to the bone broth. Uh, I find it's the two tablespoons and we're gonna be using about eight to 10 cups of water. Uh, it, so it really dilutes that. Instead of apple cider vinegar, you could use another vinegar of choice. Uh, a, a wine vinegar would be great. A white wine vinegar would be great. You could also use lemon juice or lime juice. Any acid is going to do well here. And then we're going to add our spices. I have a combination of salt, freshly ground pepper, and turmeric. Uh, you could use cumin. You could use chili powder, any um, powdered uh, spice that you would like to use or herb that you would like to use is just fine. Really experiment. But the turmeric is really nice. 
and is also a powerful anti-inflammatory and therefore immune supporting. So I added that. If you can get fresh turmeric, absolutely use it in this recipe. Uh, just make sure that you cut it into larger chunks so that you can you know, remove it from the broth or you could shred it too. It's going to leave a um, bright orange uh, color on your fingertips, but uh, worth it if you wanted to go ahead and grate that in. Uh, you could also use fresh ginger. Uh, one of my favorite alterations to this recipe is uh, a lemon ginger bone broth. So I'll add uh, two lemons that have been juiced and then I just throw the whole lemons in there after I wash them. And I add about uh, probably about a three to four inch piece of ginger that I peel and just cut into chunks. Uh, it just is a really wonderful nourishing broth and it just smells so great too. I am going to add my bay leaf and now I'm going to add the water. So I'm using about eight cups of water here. I'm thinking it's going to be enough. If not, my sink is really nearby. So I can always get some more. Yes, this is actually looking perfect. So you want just enough water to cover the vegetables and the bones. Uh, you know, if you could add more water if you wanted to, it would just dilute the flavor of the broth. I like my broth to have a lot of flavor, so I use as little liquid as I can. So eight cups for the two uh, sets of chicken bones seems to work out really great. Okay, now we're going to put the lid onto our, I'm not even going to stir it, literally just throw it in there. Put the lid on my Instant Pot. So uh, you heard the beep, so I have now locked it. I have sealed it. So make sure when you're using your Instant Pot that your venting is in the right position. You want it up so that the pressure does build up. I am going to click pressure cook. So depending on your model, it might be a little bit different, but you want to manually set it for two hours. So 120 minutes. I'm going to click pressure cook. I'm going to make sure it's on high pressure. It is. And now I'm just going to make sure that we have 120 minutes. Let me get that in here. 18, 19, 20. There we go. Done. That's it. So I am going to go out for a walk now with my family. And when we come home, the kitchen is just going to have a really wonderful smell. So that beep indicates that we are sealed, locked and loaded, ready to go. So again, in about uh, two hours, this is going to be done. Now, once your bone broth uh, is completed, uh, completed cooking, uh, just let it sit for about another 20 minutes. It will kind of self-release uh, the pressure. And then you can flip the venting uh, lever down to vent and some excess steam will uh, be released. The wonderful thing about an Instant Pot is that it's not going to let you open it under pressure. So it's going to wait until all of the pressure is gone before you can open it. Then once uh, it is complete, you remove the lid and you strain it. So just get a nice colander uh, and, and set it over a bowl. Pour your broth. Uh, you're going to be left with all of the vegetables on top and the broth on the bottom. Put your broth into your mason jar and in your fridge. It freezes wonderfully. If, it, if you don't consume it within uh, three days, you should probably freeze it. And you can use your bone broth as a beverage or you can use it as a base for soups. If you are watching now and you want to share some ideas how uh, you like to use bone broth, that would be really lovely. Thank you. Um, and then remember the potatoes I had showed you before. So I have some baked, I, you know, I... When I cook, I generally cook in bulk. Uh, so why would I roast four potatoes when I could roast eight potatoes? So I just roasted eight potatoes. Last night we ate four. Um, so now I have four left over. So what I'm going to do now is extend this to make another meal. Uh, so um, I'm going to open these up, remove the flesh, and I'm going to mash these potatoes along with a bag of steamed cauliflower rice with the vegetables that were in the bone broth. So I'm going to remove my celery and my carrots, uh, probably not the herbs, um, but just like the bigger chunks, that's why I cut them into larger chunks. Remember I told you I would explain why I cut them into chunks. Just remove those larger pieces of vegetables. They will be very, very soft. Um, so you put them into a bowl and you mash them with your potatoes and your cauliflower. And now you have this beautiful vegetable mash. My husband and I enjoy it with a little bit of really good olive oil. The kids of course love it with butter. So a little bit of butter, a little salt goes a long way with um, really elevating the children's enjoyment of the mashed vegetables. I'm going to be enjoying these on a base, uh, as a base for salted cod that I am making tonight for dinner. I've been soaking it for 
two days and I'm going to be roasting some salted cod with uh, some tomatoes and capers tonight and we're going to be serving it over this mash. So that is actually the third meal that I'm getting out of these chicken bones. The second meal that I got and I wanted to share with you was a chicken salad. So look, it doesn't take you any more time to roast two chickens as it does one. So if you can get two chickens, the store that I shop at now does have a limit with the animal proteins that we can purchase. So I usually do buy two whole chickens um, or a variety of parts. And uh, so just roast two chickens so that you get enough meat. Uh, and again, this is for a family of four. So if you're two people, one chicken would be just fine. Uh, so the chicken salad was leftover chicken meat that I chopped and I tossed with raw walnuts. Uh, I did have some grapes, but if you don't have grapes, you can add just a handful of um, like white raisins. Hosna raisins are really great or any other kind of little burst of sweetness that you can add to that. Uh, I added some raw celery, some herbs, herbs and a little bit of mayonnaise and it made a really delicious and avocado mayonnaise made a really delicious uh, chicken salad. And then again, remember I told you the two chickens, I had roasted one in the oven and then I grilled one last night. Um, I did spatchcock that chicken. So if any of you are interested in learning how to spatchcock a chicken or you just want to see me do it, I'm happy to do that. Uh, in the upcoming weeks as well. Uh, so that is our cooking demo for today. It was really quick. Uh, so please give me feedback. Let me know if there's anything else that you would like to learn how to uh, prepare. If you do make this bone broth, please share your success with me or uh, share some uh, creative ideas on variations. I wish you all well, and I look forward to seeing you in the kitchen again this week. 